This ain't good. Not good at all. Let's go walk around. All right, it's overtime and it's Sunday. We got an ice machine that's not working very well. So I get here. I don't see anything down there, very little. Other than some, I don't know, that don't look. I think it's an optical illusion, but that don't look very good. Yeah, that looks nice. That's my ice machines I like to see. Oh yeah. Mmm, yum yum. Be crazy if the uh, ultraviolet lights that they offer actually they have one. They have one on it. It's not doing very good, is it? Manitowoc, I'm not very impressed. He calls me a Sunday call. Your luminize isn't working all that great, bub. I'll tell you right now, they got some crappy water though. Look at that. That's the best city water you can ask for. Look at that. Nice calcium. They get like straight out of the creek. We got water down there. I wonder how our water pressure is, if it's really bad too. If it looks that bad inside the machine, it probably looks that bad in the water filters. We got four of them on here. I just seen that die down to nothing. Not like too bad. I have this funny feeling this got put in either late or it's not working very good. It took me a while to find the, the old spots, but here's the history. And run freeze took at least 11 minutes, maximum 15, minimum harvest two. So it's doing fairly decent. Maximum harvest six minutes. Wow, that kind of sucks. Yeah. Yeah, so we could either be low on charge, which would cause it, or it could be dirty plates. Um, definitely needs clean, but for me to clean this the way I want to clean it, I'm not going to spend three plus hours here to do it. We may just do a fast clean just to get it going, and we can always come back later and spend more time on it. One thing that stinks about this, unless it has a new software, is it may lock it into a full circuit cleaning. I don't have the latest software that allows you to stop it, because once you get it going, you're screwed. I'm put her into ice making mode and see if we can make this thing run. See what it does. See how the water adds and stuff like that. All right, it wasn't doing anything, so I went in here and looked at my outputs, and it says the liquid line valve's on. My plates don't feel very cold. I'm pretty sure this has got a compressor up on the roof. A lot of them that we sold didn't have them on the roof. They just started running. It just does not feel like it's freezing down. I don't hear a compressor running, bud. That, um, I don't think that's supposed to be like that. Yeah, we got problems, Atlantis. Not even warm, so I don't think it's even been running. Coil's clean at least. Well, gotta get my tool bag up here. I was hoping it was something simple. Well, kids, you come in here and you look at the schematic here, and you should have power coming in there. So we come over here and we check, see what we got, and it's like, okay, let's see if what we got here on the bottom is. Eh. Not so much. Maybe it's the top, right? Eh, not so much. Let's do one leg to ground. One leg to ground, I got 120 something. Obviously the other leg's gonna be the same thing because it's looping through the, uh, see, through the, the uh, compressor. But you push that in and it don't run. It doesn't run. So we've got a little disconnect switch there and yet we've got power on one leg. Makes me wonder if we've got a breaker that didn't completely reset or exactly what. Double check here, yes, it's 200 and some volts is what it's rated for. We're missing one leg. Could check the switch here. I don't know where we got that at. It's not one we usually use too often. 
Usually they just have a disconnect up here, and this should be just a regular cover over top of a normal looking switch. See, all it is is a little flipper. That's all it does is flip it. Got off, flip it. Yeah. It's a Hubble switch, man. Those don't ever go bad, usually. They got that ground wire kind of scary, like the way it is in the back here. Holy mackerel. Yeah, let's yank that thing out there and take another peek of loo at it. Well, I've got it flipped on. Let's see if we got power to the switch. All right, so the bottom there, we do have 213 volts. We're gonna flip the switch on and off a few times and see if uh, if it uh, comes back every time. Kind of try to determine if it's actually the switch or is it just that mechanism there wasn't letting the switch go all the way into position. Okay, so this isn't very scientific, but I have it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. That right, that right there is enough to disengage that switch. Right there. One leg's still hot, the other leg's not. I don't trust the switch. Even Hubble has a bad day. I mean, it's got a really nice click one direction, but that's, that's an issue. So it's getting pulled. Okay, so I'm pulling the switch out and the two wires pop out of the back of it because they must not have gotten tightened down as best I can figure. Uh, these Hubble switches, um, they ain't stabs in the back like those junk ones that you see uh, for home receptacles. But yeah, when two of them pull out like that, that's kind of bad. Not not impressed, not impressed at all. So is it a is it a um, problem with the switch or is it just poor torque on the uh, screw? Not sure, honestly. At this point, I don't care. It's getting bypassed and they're ordering a new switch. This call costs more money than that switch does and uh, it's just not worth it. So we're gonna get a new switch. I'm looking at these and I give it a little tug and I, I really need both hands to be able to show you. Yeah, that's a problem. Unfortunately, they didn't get tightened up and that looks like it ain't even the full size gauge of the wire. It almost looks like it's smaller. Could be wrong, but it just looks smaller. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just go ahead and wire nut that puppy together. You know me, I don't give up. So I went ahead and put it on resistance. Did continuity check through it for the buzz, and I mean literally just a little bit there, and it cuts out. Um, this all pops apart. You could probably inspect it. We're not going to waste time on that. Kind of curious to see where it's made at. They used to be made here, but it's probably got sold out. Anyhow, hell with it. Go ahead and get that wire nutted up. Hopefully get their stuff back up and going and we're gonna to to come back, replace the switch and the machine needs cleaned. All right, I'm gonna use a little Wago here because they always get questioned about that. I finally got some. Not rated for more than 20 amps. At least these ones aren't. The minimum circuit capacity of this unit's 20. It's technically probably on a 30 amp circuit. So you got the inrush, it ain't permanent. So it'll be good enough for now and I don't have to damage my wires and I'll make it easy to get it back in there and not have to worry about anything until I get back. Let's see if this thing makes ice now. We might scrub up the plates a little bit just to get them by. And it's been running for a little bit. It's fairly cooler out today, but it's putting out some heat. Got a piece of tape over the switch and it's on the off position. Nobody should be messing with it but us and unless they have a ladder, they're not gonna be getting up here. So. All right, so we scrubbed that bottom rail there, which is gonna get us a nice distribution across the bottom. We didn't disturb the nastiness up above. It's been sitting there for a while now. No sense of messing with it just this moment. We'll come back and get that here in the next day or two. Uh, like I said, today's Sunday. I'm just gonna get it done, get it back up and running. Our primary problem here was the switch up on the roof uh, had issues. And uh, so we're gonna get another one of those. The machine definitely is in dire need of being cleaned. Uh, according to what I was seeing there, it's only been in operation for seven months. Because of the uh, yeast in the air, that's uh, what ends up happening. The ultraviolet light should have controlled that a lot better than what it did. So I'm not sure exactly what the story is or why it is that way, but it doesn't seem to be doing as good as what I was hoping for. But we're gonna watch it for a little bit here and make sure it makes some ice. So it failed going into the harvest, so we're manually doing it. And um, one side obviously drops. We're gonna run some cleaner through it just to make the uh, plates slippery again. And there went the lower half of it. It really wasn't what I needed. There we go, Get the rest of it. 
I mean, it could have been partially because of the previous last failed freeze. I'm gonna run some cleaner through it. I ain't gonna take a chance. This is a little different than the last one. Last I checked, I couldn't get this thing to come out of it. So unfortunately, we're gonna go ahead and do it. Went ahead and took those back to the dish area and cleaned those up because they were pretty bad. Just added our cleaning solution in here. Kind of interesting, this new one here actually has you confirm that you've added it so you don't miss out on your timing. While it's doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and scrub some of this up here, some of the basics and stuff, and then when we come back, I can just yank uh, the bottom tray out and get that cleaned yeah. up. At least then anything drippage-wise will go on to what little left they have down there. So I'll just do it now. Just gotta wait uh, 30 minutes for it to go through a clean mode anyway. Two of your most useful tools, man. Toothbrush, scrub brush, and for rough times, a grout brush. And then for some of the older machines, a baby bottle brush, a couple rags, get yourself a couple little buckets from uh, whether it be some chicken noodle salad or whatever, or freaking the great whites. Either way, you gotta have some boxes there. So we've got all this crap up in here all completely cleaned out and everything's a lot better than what it was. When I come back, we're just gonna have to yank out this bottom tray, scrub there, scrub up underneath, and uh, underneath the very bottom of it. I was gonna show off my uh, New sprayer I got to try out, um, made by Supco. Uh, that thing's got some good promise to it. It's uh, cheap and it seems to work pretty decent. And uh, it's really compact and small and it'll even run off my uh, Milwaukee uh, 120 volt power supply thing that uh, you know gives you battery power turned into utility power. So um, I'm gonna show that off here for long. Just got to have the right moment to do it. But like I said, we've got it pretty much there. It's rinsing out right now. And uh, we'll go ahead and run another batch of ice uh, once this is done. Like I said, right now it's just uh, doing its rinse. It's gonna do, I think, three of them, if I remember correctly. I uh, haven't done much with the new machines, but uh, yeah, we'll completely tear some of this water trough stuff apart when we come back. We'll yank the water pump and stuff out, but tried a few things to try to get this stupid thing out of this damn clean mode and I asked them during a freaking podcast thing they did or whatever and they said update this firmware which I haven't done or I don't have on my computer I tried pulling the power I tried holding the little button in there while putting it back together I tried letting it out for so long none of those things happen it holds it in the freaking memory what I figured out was if you hit the power button while holding that and I think I hit the clean button and Anyhow, it wanted to know if I wanted to go into clean, and it tells you again, do you want to go into clean mode? It'll be locked for 30 minutes. And then it gives you the option to abort. I aborted it, boom, went back into making ice. I've already done rinsed more than enough times. So I'm trying to get this stupid thing up and going so I can make sure it works. I don't remember exactly what it was, and I'm not gonna put it back into it to find out, but there is a way to do it, so I wanted to throw that out there. And it was basically by a matter of, I think it was turn it off, and then tell it to go into ice again and then abort it. I think's how I ended up doing it. I don't remember. It's kind of very similar to how I used to override the other ones, basically by stop, clean, stop, clean. And I had like two or three of them, then it would them out of it. That's how the old ones were. Basically, I think it's the same thing here with this one. So anyhow, this is uh, starting to go into uh, freeze mode, it looks like. I still don't know my way around this thing very well. There's data, real-time data liquid line valve is on so we're starting to freeze down and we're in a pre-chill so it should be starting to freeze down here real quick and as always if you leave this cover off and it's warm in here it will slush the the ice uh, trough where the water's at which will then cause the whole machine to take a dump on you so literally so you'll just make sure you cover it back up when you're testing it if you can or if you need you know if, you, if there's any way possible whether it be a piece of cardboard whatever um, it'll save you some headache because once it slushes, you might as well just start all over or at least get the door on there depending on how much is left. It can sometimes salvage it because it'll start warming up pretty quick. But let's see what we got here. Hopefully we can make a nice batch and dump and get the heck out of here. Just went into harvest 11 seconds ago. We're watching this thing. Let's see if it drops both batches of ice here. Boom. Come on, we'll see the other one do it. Let's go. There you go. Three minutes, five seconds. All right, so we dug out that last batch because it had a little bit of blue to it. So we'll come back here in the next day or two whenever we get the switch and finish cleaning it up and uh, go from there. Guys, that's gonna wrap this one up. Check your power, check your cleanness. Check your power, check your cleanliness and uh, kind of go from there. Till next time, guys, check out like. Make sure you guys hit like. Check out Facebook. 
Check out Instagram. Check, 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 check. Baby, check, baby, check. One, two, three, four. All right, guys, that wraps things up. If you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, please hit like. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram and Facebook. And until next time, we will catch you on the next one. So we've got an overtime call here. And this rack has an alarm. So we're adding some gas to it. My frozen meat case here, it's supposed to be negative 10. We're running in there at 43 degrees. Uh, the sight glass, I can't even find it. I don't know if it has one. I think it's all digital. You can see our temperatures there are not where they should be at. The uh, receiver has uh, little balls and stuff and it's, they're completely all the way to the bottom. Uh, this thing's had multiple leaks in the past. So it's not a surprise. I just fixed one on one of the other racks, and it wouldn't surprise me if this is uh, got one too. We're gonna go inside and see if we can find something. I'm gonna scan out here real quick first, just to see if uh, if we got anything out here, and then I'm gonna go inside and start looking around. The Stratus last time found the leak as soon as I walked through the door. We ended up having to use the uh, parts per million mode because it went off immediately when I went through the door the other day, well, a week ago. So it wouldn't surprise me if we need to do the same thing again. But for right now, let's start off with Super and see if we can find anything in here. All right, so I had a hit here on this one. I haven't sprayed it yet, but it gets up in the 200 range. I doubt that's the only one. So we're gonna go in the store and see what we get. Yeah, it was up in the 200 range a minute ago. So we'll go back into Super mode and keep on looking around. Generally, when you're adding this much refrigerant, it uh, takes a bit to get used to. It's not, it's not gonna be a tiny little burger. You're gonna get nailed with a big old hit and it's gonna be from a distance. We'll double check that thing when we get back in. This ain't good. Not good at all. Let's go walk around. Yeah, when we get close, we're gonna hit big. Well, we're gonna walk around for a bit, see what we find. They had one cooler, this one over there and this one here that were on the uh, freezer rack. Found uh, oil on this baby here. If I can get it to focus here. You can see the yellow oil. definitely would be going off something fierce unless it's zeroed out and yeah, zeroed out yeah that's the only problem with that it's sometimes if it gets too contaminated it will zero out okay we had to climb back behind here you can see Leaking right there on that fitting. Definitely got it there on that one. That's right, uh, right before the TXV. I gotta sip it down a little better. I think we just now got some flow coming through it. Definitely, it might be lucky. We might be able to just tighten it up. I doubt it, but we might. So what I end up doing is putting D4 of the deli freezer, which it ain't even D4. That don't make sense, deli freezer. D4. Deli freezer. Yeah, that was a deli freezer originally. Right now they're using it as a cooler, because that is the deli. So I put it in defrost, which is going to um, jam hot gas back through it. And the device that was leaking is the check valve, so that's going to leak like a sieve when that goes into defrost. So let's check it now. So what we got right now, got hot, ga hot gas coming in through this suction header. Uh, which don't feel that hot. Coming through, coming through the TXV, comes out of the TXV. They've got that sucker pinched down big time. That's warm. Comes through, I wish that crap wasn't in the way, the check valve, and then back on the liquid line that goes back to the liquid rack. It's kind of hard to see because there's so much uh, crap in the way back here. 
but trust me, it's not leaking. We got lucky. And with that right there, we got high pressure on it. So if it was leaking, you would see it plain as day. And it's not, which is great. Not often that you get a nice easy one like that. Yeah, we got her, Bubba. I don't see anything leaking down there on any of that. You can see all the oil down there. All right, boys and girls, it's gonna wrap this one up. Let's go back here and double check a few things. All right, well, we was able to get that up and going. Uh, everything on the rack was coming down to temperature. This call was about an hour and a quarter away from home. The store didn't have any refrigerant, so we had to pick some up from another store. So it was kind of a mess. I mean, we dumped 100 pounds in there and we weren't even getting the floats up. So it's just, that's as much as I had to, available to get. That was R507. Yeah, I scanned around some of the other cases. I was there earlier uh, on Monday and fixed a leak on one of the other racks where a 3 8 line had rubbed against the fan, the evaporator fan bracket inside the unit. And it uh, ate a hole right through it. And that was a hellacious uh, freaking leak. Um, so anyhow, that, uh, that wraps that up, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the thumbs button. Check out Facebook, Instagram, and uh, until next time, catch you guys on the next one.